So we've now come to the point where we want to be able to predict redox reactions. We want to be able to answer this question. If we dump some substances together, which ones in there will react? So in all the substances that we dump together, we might have some oxidizing agents and some reducing agents. Which ones are going to gain the upper hand? If we have a couple of possible spontaneous reactions, which ones will actually happen? And the short answer to that question is that the strongest oxidizing agent and the strongest reducing agent will win. They will be the ones that will end up trading electrons, gaining and losing electrons. All the rest will just sit there as spectators. So let's look at an example to see how we would go about figuring that out in practice. An acidified potassium permanganate solution is added to a sodium iodide solution. Sounds pretty simple, right? But what's actually going to happen in here? Well, we've got to start with listing every material present in what form it is, and then start identifying oxidizing and reducing agents. So let's take literally one word at a time. We have an acidified potassium permanganate solution. So acidified means that there's going to be some H plus ions present in here, aqueous H plus. So that gets rid of our acidified. We've now got potassium permanganate. Potassium permanganate is an ionic bond between potassium, which is K plus, and the permanganate a polyatomic ion, which is MnO minus, O4 minus. So that gets rid of that. This is in solution. Solution means that there is water present. So H2O in its liquid form. And this is added to sodium iodide solution. Sodium iodide being another ionic bond, Na plus, and iodide is I minus. Once again, it's in solution, but we already have the water listed there. So when we dump these things together, basically these are the species present. So our next step is to go to our data booklet and look at the table of selected electrode potentials or the reduction half reactions, which I've also pasted right here. And remember, we've made similar tables to this ourselves by looking at experimental data. But this is basically a table that is collected from experimental data from a lot of different experiments to see which things are most likely to oxidize and reduce other things. So what we now have to do is find all of our substances on this table, and then we'll be able to see which is the strongest oxidizing and reducing agents. So let's start by looking for the H plus, for example. Well, if you're looking for H plus, you'll see a lot of different H pluses in here that are combined with other things, but H plus by itself doesn't appear until further down the list. And right here, we've got H plus as an oxidizing agent. But you might notice that up closer to the top, we also had H plus with the permanganate ion as an oxidizing agent. And that might be important for us because we have both of them in our solution. We also have the permanganate ion. If we continue our search, we'll be able to also find the potassium ion in here as an oxidizing agent. Water is one of our substances, also an oxidizing agent. We've got sodium here, the sodium ion, I should say. And it looks like that's it for any oxidizing agents. However, there might be some that show up on the other side of our table as reducing agents. And the first one you're going to notice is iodine the iodide ion, I should say. And if we keep skimming the list, we should also find water as a reducing agent. I'll pass it up, it's way close to the top. Here we have water as a reducing agent. And you need to just basically look through the list thoroughly to find any other possible options. In this case, we've got them all for this reaction. So we can go list what's what uh, by our species up here. So we had found that H plus was an oxidizing agent, one possibility. K plus was an oxidizing agent. We found that permanganate with H plus was another oxidizing agent. We found that water could be an oxidizing agent. And we found that sodium plus could be an oxidizing agent. And for reducing agents, we also found that water could possibly be a reducing agent. We found that iodide could also be a reducing agent. So we've listed all the possibilities. So there's a lot of things in this experiment, in this example, which would like to be oxidizing and reducing agents. Again, which one is actually going to be? 
which ones are going to gain or lose electrons? Those are the strongest oxidizing and reducing agents. So for us, that's easy to find since I've circled them on my chart, which unfortunately you can't always do, uh, unless uh, you would find a trick like getting a page protector binder sleeve and printing a copy of this in there, then you can mark up on there and erase it. But our strongest oxidizing agent is going to be this permanganate with H+. And our strongest reducing agent, as far to the bottom as it gets, is going to be this iodide ion. So we can list now which ones are strongest. H plus with permanganate is our strongest oxidizing agent and the iodide ion is our strongest reducing agent. So these are the things that are going to react. Now what we have to do is basically write out those half reaction equations. Well, the nice part for us is we don't have to manually balance these things. These things are already given to us. Here is the half reaction equation that we need to write out. It's this entire thing. So it's already balanced. We already know what the reactants and products are. The same thing for the strongest reducing agent. We've got to write that entire equation out. Those two halves are what's going to happen in our example. Now the nice part for me is that I can just paste them here. So here's the two half reactions that are going to happen. We have the reduction half and then the oxidation half. Now both of them are written as reduction in the forward direction, but obviously um, oxidation happens in the opposite direction. So our strongest oxidizing agent, is this permanganate with the H+, is going to be reduced. So that is the reduction half of our equation, the permanganate with the H+. That's going to happen then in the forward direction. And the opposite one is the oxidation half reaction. And we know for oxidation, it's going to lose electrons. This is happening in the reverse direction. And it is our reducing agent, our strongest reducing agent. And before we can write our final equation of what's actually going on, we're going to have to balance the number of electrons. We know if our permanganate with H plus is going to be gaining five electrons, but our iodine is only losing two electrons, then we're going to need a lot more iodine, iodide to react in order for there to be enough electrons for the permanganate. So we're going to need to multiply our first reaction times two and our second reaction times five so that we can get a balance of total 10 electrons being transferred between these things. And with that in mind, we will go write the final reaction equation. So this is simply a matter of combining all the reactants and all the products. Don't forget the multiplier. Don't forget also that the way I have it, our second equation here is actually going in reverse. So we need to have uh, two of the MnO4 minus ions. We need to have eight times two is 16 H plus ions. We need to have 10 electrons. So that's our reactants from the first equation. Then from the second equation, we've got two times five is 10 iodide ions, I minus. And now we can go to our products, which are gonna be the Mn2 plus aqueous. Uh, sorry, I need to have my multiply there. So we need two of them. Four times two is eight H2O. And we also need 10 electrons here. And we need, lastly, five iodine solid. Now, the only thing you'll notice is I have some things appearing on both sides of my reaction equation, namely the electrons. If it gains electrons and loses electrons, we can ignore those terms. So we're going to, I'm just going to erase the electron terms here. And now we have our completed reaction. So to answer the example question, well, there was no question written, but if we mix these things together, this is the reaction that we predict will actually happen. The other ions, like for example, the sodium ion, the potassium ion, they're gonna be spectators. They're gonna be there at the beginning, they're gonna be there at the end, they're not gonna be involved. So to sum up our method here, what we did was we first listed all species present. We identified each one as being either an oxidizing or reducing agent, or for example, in the case of water, it could be both. 
And then we found which one was which one or set was the strongest oxidizing and reducing agent. We found picked those reactions, we balanced those half reactions with the electrons, and we then wrote them together as our predicted reaction. So this five-step method is basically the way we're going to predict these reactions. Let's try another example. Aqueous solutions of tin 2 bromide and iron 3 nitrate are mixed. Well, atrius, let's uh, start with our method list all species. Aqueous means we've got water present. Solutions of tin 2 bromide, that's SN2 plus, and Br minus. We're mixing that with iron 3 nitrate, that's Fe3 plus, and Nitrate is NO3 minus. All these are aqueous in solution. So this is what we've got present. Number two, we've got to identify each as an oxidizing and or reducing agent. So for this, we're going to go back to our table. Well, here for one, we've got bromine as a reducing agent. We've got Fe3 plus as an oxidizing agent. I see down here tin 2 plus as a reducing agent. And if we keep going, we'll get tin 2 plus as an oxidizing agent. We've got our usual water as an oxidizing agent. And I've already passed up our water as a reducing agent. Let's just make sure we've got nothing else here. Doesn't look like it. So our water as a reducing agent. And notice we haven't gotten the NO3 minus yet. So we'll skim through our list again. Here we've got NO3 minus with H plus, but we don't have H plus. It doesn't say this is acidic solution. So in this case, our NO3 minus is actually not going to be either a reducing or an oxidizing agent. So water, of course, is both a reducing agent and an oxidizing agent. Tin 2 plus was also both a reducing agent and an oxidizing agent. Bromine was a reducing agent. Our iron 3 plus was an oxidizing agent, and NO3 minus did not show up by itself or with any of these species. So once again, if we go check which one is the strongest, we had the strongest oxidizing agent being iron 3 plus, and the strongest reducing agent being tin 2 plus. So our reaction is actually really going to happen between these two things. At least our oxidizing agent is above the reducing agent, so there is a spontaneous reaction. So, so Fe3 plus was our strongest oxidizing agent, tin 2 plus our strongest reducing agent. So now let's again write those half reactions. Our reduction half reaction said that Fe3 plus would gain one electron to form Fe2 plus. And our oxidation half said that tin 2 plus would turn into, so I'm writing it in the opposite order now, I'm writing it as an oxidation reaction, uh, would turn into tin 4 plus plus 2 electrons. In this case, uh, for our step 3, we've got to balance the number of electrons, so we've got to multiply this reaction times 2, and then we can go ahead and write this as a balanced reaction. So we've got 2 Fe3 plus. We're going to leave out the electrons because we know that we balance them. There's an equal number as products and reactants, so I'll leave them out. Our other reactant is the Sn2 plus tin ion. is going to form as our product 2 Fe2 plus and Sn4 plus. It's a little bit simpler of a reaction here, but this is what we predict will happen if we mix those species. So as long as you follow the steps, the tools are there. You have your reduction half reaction table, which basically allows you to make these predictions. Enjoy.